and welcome to Inside Berkeley. I'm your host, Tori Mathis. Today, I have Teresa McCarlton with me, Parks and Recreation Director. How are you doing today? I'm so well, and I'm excited to be here to talk to you today, Tori. Yes, I'm very excited too. There's just been so much that's happened since the last time we were able to, to sit down together, um, you know, given the pandemic, but also just the Rec Master Plan that happened last year. Um, I mean, the transition that your department's made with, you know, virtual programming to socially distant uh, events. Um, can you give the community an update on, you know, what you guys have been up to and, and the, everything that's happened in the last year? Sure, I'd love to. So like everyone, you know, we've had to adapt over the last year and we've done our best to do that and to still stay engaged with the community and still offer them safe, um, but uh, programming and events and things that they can do. We initially started off just doing a lot of social media engagement on Facebook, things that you can do safely from home. And then from that kind of transition to outdoor programming, some virtual programming in the fall. We also were able to do some socially distant um, uh, events and programming outside. Um, kind of adjusted and kind of flipped our building inside out um, when, when we saw that it was safer to be outside together. Um, obviously followed all guidelines with that. Um, we changed a little bit how we register for people so that there were specific times they were doing that. We were also able to do a number of scavenger hunts both through the city at our parks to get people outside and then also with Oakland County. So again, just looking to to adapt, looking to keep people safe, but give them uh, alternative things to do and things to do outside of their house. And we've been really excited to see a lot of the community and we felt that a lot of those events have been um, well attended and also people have been excited to be out there but safely together. And that's been really exciting for us. Oh, absolutely. And if this year hasn't taught us anything, I mean, it our outdoors and, and you know our parks are just so important just to have those community gathering spaces uh, safely of course um, and you know the reason why we're here today is to talk about one of those would you like to share more details on that I'd love to yeah so um, you know one of the things that has been really exciting that we were able to do last year is to start the redevelopment of Oxford Merchants Park um, this park uh, people have heard us talk about for a very long time um, which is a good thing because they they know that it's coming right and they're probably ready for it to be done i understand that we are too um, but just for a little background in case people don't know exactly um, the, the history of, of of the property um, the city has always owned um, a portion of the park known as merchants park and um, in 2014 um, worked out a deal to purchase an additional three acres known as the oxford park property from the school district that the school district owns um, the city uh, then said okay now we need a plan for this park so so the city hired um, at the time Land and Landscape, now known as Native Edge Design, to go through a park planning process. We were also at the same time doing our five-year recreation master plan in 2015. So there were a number of community meetings talking about this park, a number of them specifically talking about the park, and then a number of them that it was talked about. Um, there were also community surveys and, and, and that sort of thing to say, what do you want to see at this park? Obviously, we got a whole host of different answers, but it was the job of our park planners and staff to narrow down what those top things that people wanted to see and to identify those amenities. And some of those things were walking paths, something that people wanted to see so they weren't going a, 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 on a large bit of grass that is often wet to, to get to the park. Um, new play equipment, which is something we hear about a lot of our parks, uh, a splash pad, and then a huge thing that we hear for all of our parks, but particularly this property, were restrooms. Um, we then identified those three those items. Um, we applied for state grant funding in 2017, narrowly um, did not receive that grant funding, reapplied in 2018. And part of that grant funding is that, again, you have community meetings. So again, you're talking about this. Again, you're going to your council, which is why people have heard us talk about this. We did receive a, a grant to move forward with um, partially funding this, and then the city is funding the additional amount um, for the elements that we're going to see now. This park is a multi-year park process, always was, so there will be additional stuff in, in the years to come. And we're just really excited that we were able to, after all of the talking, all of the planning, all of the meetings, ground did break on it in the fall of 2020. So even amidst the pandemic, we were able to start this really exciting project that we will see um, come to completion very, very soon. Yeah, that's amazing. And I know that many people, at least since I've started, have been talking about it both internally and uh, externally. And, uh, you know, before we get into the nitty gritty, I just kind of want to hear from you as the director, um, you know, some of the things that you're most looking forward to with this this park being opened uh, and, and the amenities that are being provided. Sure, so um, 
honestly, I, I'm really excited about the walkways. It's probably, the, it seems like the least exciting thing, but I think having access from both Bacon and Cambridge, and, and eventually we'll have access from Oxford, to get to the park amenities I think is huge, right? And it allows people to sort of walk through the space. Um, and it makes it um, not just a park about little kids who are fine running on the grass, right? It makes it a park for everybody. And I think parks, it's, I think it's really important to know that parks aren't just for children, right? They're multi-generational, or at least we hope that they will be. Um, so one of the things that we did with the splash pad is that it is just a concrete pad. Now water comes out and the kids have a lot of fun, but we're hoping that it will also maybe like a grandparent that's with their, their grandchild or parent will feel free to run through it too on a hot day. Um, or the space can be used when the water's off for things like a concert in the park. Um, having electricity in the park is huge. Um, it's something that is often not thought about until you need it. And we don't have it in any of our parks, which is something that we're hoping to remedy over the next few years. This park will have electricity because of the restroom facility. Obviously, a restroom facility also major because we put porta potties in all of our parks in the summer, and it's something we do in all our other parks and we'll continue to do. But with the exception of a concession stand that has restrooms, we don't have that. So that's very exciting. New play equipment is always exciting. People are, are always excited to see that, and we're excited to have that at this park. And then, I mean, the splash pad is, is a really exciting piece of this, and we have a seating area that's near it that will eventually have shade, and, um, you know, just really excited to see that come to life. And then we're working with our tree board to, um, you know, in this year and also future years, plant more trees around the park. Um, and then, you know, tables, benches, again, thinking of it as a multi-generational park for everyone. Absolutely, and you know, it's great to hear because uh, I know we talk a lot internally about being more inclusive, being more accessible, um, but you know, actually being able to showcase that and have t a tangible space that really you know, codifies that I think is great. And um, I know you're really excited. We're obviously super excited and, you know, we hope community, the community is as well. Um, do you know when the anticipated open date is? Yep, so originally we were targeting the end of April for a soft opening where the park would be open. Obviously the splash pad wouldn't be on. Um, we are running just behind that, which um, given construction, given construction at this current time and also of the magnitude, we're right now looking about a week behind that. We're hoping that doesn't change. So about that May 7th date would be a soft opening where the park would be open, the restrooms, the um, play equipment, and then the splash pad would open sometime either just before or just after Memorial, just given weather, um, but it will be completed. So that the summer of 2021, um, assuming um, that health wise and, and guideline wise, the splash pad can be on, you know, we'll, we'll again follow those rules that we will have a fully open park um, for the entire summer. Amazing yeah. and super exciting yeah. to hear. Um, you know, you talked a lot about, you know, the community engagement and public input component. And, you know, obviously, I, it, it's what I love, uh, and, you know, why you're here today. And, you know, there's this added measure that, you know, we're, we're including in this because of how big this redevelopment is and what this means for the community. Can you talk about, you know, yeah, what's coming? Yeah, I'd like to, because this is something we've <laughs> talked about for a long time um, and kind of went back and forth on, on what the right thing to do was, um, you know, got approval from city administration and city attorney and and, and, and and city council and our recreation advisory board knew about this. And, and this is um, the naming of the park, right? Um, so the park has property Oxford merchants or property Oxford property merchants, and, and we've been using this double name or some people just call it merchants or some people just call it Oxford. So we talked about, do we keep it the double name? Do we go with one or the other? And and really, I, I think what we all settled on was we want to move forward and we want this park to be sort of a symbol of that. And it and, and parks are the community's park, right? It's, it's for everyone and obviously other people can come to our park, but um, we want it to really um, be for our community members and, and members and, and represent what Berkeley is. So we came up with, with this idea, a, a nice way to do that is to allow community members to submit names to name the park, a park naming contest, um, which we were super excited about. We rolled out recently and um, we've already started receiving names. People can um, uh, submit a name in cell and they can find that on the city's website, berkeleymich.org, obviously, and they can submit a name until April 23rd. And then um, from there, city and 
Administration, Parks and Recreation staff, and Parks and Recreation Advisory Board will form a committee to narrow down those names. Obviously, there are certain stipulations that have to be appropriate. We have asked um, that they not be named after a person for a host of different reasons. Um, and um, we'll narrow it down to, we're, we're saying five, but if there's you know seven or eight great names, then we'll include those. Um, and then those will be given to the City Council who will make the final name selection. And then we're hoping at the, the grand opening um, that we will unveil the, the name of this park and that really it will be, you know, moving forward, um, a beautiful symbol of, you know, kind of a renewal. And I think now more than ever, that's kind of a lovely idea. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I just think, you know, as we've seen over the past year, our community has really showcased um, the hashtag Berkeley strong. And mm -hmm. I know that kind of came through in the sentiments over the past year. So this is, I am so excited for it. You know, I'm, go ahead. I just want to <laughs> add one thing. I think my favorite element of the park naming contest um, is the why. Mm -hmm. um, we're asking people, why do you want to name it this? Sure. And I think, I think that's such a beautiful thing because I think that'll help inform um, what that park is named. And I think that's personal. I think that's community. And I think that that's my favorite part of the contest. Absolutely. And I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, just to recap for everyone, the where they can go is obviously the website, mm -hmm. um, but for those of you watching as well, we did create a friendly URL and it's berkeleymish.org slash park contest. Guidelines as well as the rules and regulations are also found there. Um, so be sure to, to check that out and we can't wait uh, to see your submissions. Teresa, what are other ways that people can get involved um, or show their support for this new park? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we're telling people, um, either people or community groups, is that they can donate a bench. Um, we're going to put benches in different areas of the park. It kind of um, gets to that multi-generational aspect, you know, for seating. We have selected the bench, obviously, so they're all uniform and they're approved. Um, but the bench cost is $440. So you'd have to donate that entire amount, either a group or a person. But when you do, you'll get a little plaque and we'll ask you what you want it to say. Um, and then when the park opens, opens, we'll have that bench there. So again, it's $440. All the information um, for how to donate to it is on your screen. Um, we are asking that people let us know by April 23rd if they want to donate it. Um, and we're really excited about uh, allowing either an individual to dedicate it to someone or a community group um, to have kind of their place in the park. Um, sure. And again, another community aspect to this. Oh, and I love it. And I, and I think all of this is great. And I appreciate your time right now for this like um, I think this is just a huge and exciting thing that's happening you know given everything you know and I know we keep referencing you know the looming pandemic but you know it's nice to to have something so huge and, and bring the community together um, so before I close out I just want to ask you one more time can you share you know where people can go to learn more um, or find all of this information whether it's about Oxford Merchants Park the park contest or even the benches yeah berkeleymish.org uh, the city's website all of our information is there and again you know this park is for the community so we can't wait to see them there and we hope that they love it yeah absolutely well thank you again so much for your time today Teresa um, I'm super excited to see what comes through especially in the coming months um, for community members you know thank you for watching um, this has been inside Berkeley and we'll see you guys next time